Welcome back growers, it's Matt with Cannabis Science and this is the irrigation and fertilizer video showing you exactly how I set up Cannabis Science Labs here uh, to run beautiful flower and veg uh, in Rockwell. So we're starting off with the main event which is our 55 gallon trash can. And I wanted to show you first how I measure the EC or the parts per million of the fertilizer water, the temperature and the pH. These are all metrics that you should be using as well when you're growing cannabis, okay? You should always know what your pH is, what, you should, what your temperature is at, and what your EC or parts per million, however you cho choose to read your fertilizer water. Okay, so this is my Blue Lab Guardian. I love it, I sit up there. It's a little more expensive than the handhelds for sure, but it is easy to read and sits there and, and constantly monitors what my fertigation water is. Now, I have those two probes, right, from the Blue Lab Guardian there in my Portland City water, which is absolutely beautiful. It's like, I don't know, 0.1 EC, 0.2 EC at the most, um, and it ranges somewhere between 6.9 and 7.2 pH. Okay, so here you go. Let's take a look at what my irrigation setup is. Okay, and so again, we have just a 55 gallon trash can that you can get at most big box stores. I got mine at Home Depot down the street. Pretty easy. Um, I like those little uh, handles and those little like uh, fins that come off the handles. They, they hold the, the Blue Lab uh, metering lines uh, real nicely, real secure, okay? But that's it, there's 55 gallons, and I basically run everything off of 50 gallons of water. So I've cleaned this thing out nicely, um, and we're looking at the Leader Eco Diver 1200, okay? This is 1,620 gallons per hour, as they say, and it is a one horsepower submersible pump. Um, and this thing ranges, I just look at the, the how much it costs. I think it ranges from like 330 bucks right now to $480. So make sure if you want this one, you know, take a look at what it's available online right now. The, the costs are all over the place. So basically it comes, it's just a very simple hookup. Um, I have a, a couple fittings there to re reduce it down to about a half inch, that 16, 17 millimeter uh, flexible tubing um, that you can get from uh, Floriflex and Netafim. Um, and then there's a um, that Netafim uh, piece right there, that kind of in the middle, and that helps to make sure that anything, um, that anything big chunks or something goes through, it's like a little filter and that's all it is. And then basically it goes up from there and out through the wall and into my grow room. Now what we're looking at right there on the wall is how I mount my, um, my basically my pump goes into that and that is what uh, is times it. So it'll come on um, about every, you know, every hour for about one minute, okay? And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But anyway, that's it. So basically you've got the pump, you've got some um, parts to uh, basically fit your line onto um, and then from there, uh, it goes into the grow room. And so another big thing you should get, if you've got a 55 gallon drub, uh, gallon um, tub for your fertilizer water, I recommend getting the 529 gallon per hour water pump. These are just you know regular submersible pumps. You can see that top a little fitting right there will blow out that water. And what you can do is you're gonna set this on the bottom of your uh, your tank there, and it's going to circulate the water real nice, ni real nicely. If you go over this, it's kind of overkill, but you can turn it down. There's, it's adjustable, and if you go lower than the 529 gallon per hour, it's just not enough. You can still use one, even if it's lower. It's just it's nice to have that a little bit more um, action to um, spin your water. So this is how I fertilize my plants here at Cannabis Science Labs. And I use J.R. Peters Jax 321 system. It is a part A, part B, and if you want to call it part C, which is the Epsom salts. The part A, which is on top there, is that brownish fertilizer, is a 51226, so five nitrogen, 12 phosphorus, and uh, 26 parts of um, potassium, and it has all the micronutrients that you need as well into it, okay? Um, so that portion right there, I mix at 3.6 grams per gallon of water. The second component 
is what they call the part B, which is going to be mixed at 2.4 grams per gallon of water, and that's calcium nitrate, and that's a 15 OO fertilizer, okay? And then the bottom part, as you say, or part C, as I like to say, is just Epsom salt. You can buy this Epsom salt anywhere. You can go down to you know, your local um, Rite Aid or um, get it online. It's just pure Epsom salts. You want to get the nice, clean Epsom salts. Um, it's magnesium sulfate. That's all it is. It's super cheap. Um, but that gives you all the magnesium and the sulfur that you need to make beautiful flour. Okay? And you're going to add that into your fertilizer water at 1.2 grams per gallon of water. Now, some people will cut that out or some people reduce that. I pretty much just keep it right there at 1.2 grams uh, per gallon of water, pretty much through the entire um, cycle of flowering. Um, you might have different results and different things. I use rock wool, so basically um, I like to have all those nutrients available all the time. And um, that's how I roll here at the Cannabis Science Lab. Now, what is that liquid, liquid stuff to the right in a little picture? That is potassium silicate. Very crucial that you add a little bit of potassium silicate to your system. It definitely helps to resist against diseases and insects. Also helps with overall sort of flowering, um, like rigidity, rigidity of the flower. Uh, stands up nice. It helps to reduce stresses like, like um, different kinds of sun stress or light stress or heat stress. Um, as something that you should definitely think about adding if you're not already adding some kind of potassium silicate. Now, don't spend a lot on potassium silicate. You get there's a crazy a couple of crazies out there. There's so much, but all you gotta do is just make sure you get the cheapest potassium silicate you can for what it is. Now, I add uh, my potassium silicate as Agsil 25. It is the cheapest, most concentrated, best way of getting calcium or sorry, potassium silicate or silicon to your plants. Okay, it is not available. So Agsil 25 is not available in anything less than a 55 gallon drop. So it's not for everyone. But again, I'm a commercial grower. I work with large commercial grow operations. So they use this stuff all the time. Um, and it keeps the cost way down. So as far as some of the other potassium silicates goes out there, you know, look around for the different costs. All you care about is how much it takes to get your silicon. So for my 50 gallon drum, I put in 2.5 ounces of Agsil 25 potassium silicate to the 50 gallons of water. That's it. That's all you have to, and it literally cost me pennies, if not like 25 cents or 30 cents or something um, per 50 gallons of water, okay? So just so you know, all of my fertilizer, all those four parts right there, cost me somewhere right around $5.50 for every time I do a 50 gallon tank of water, fertilizer water, okay? So the way you, um, do this as I'm going to show you in a little bit here is that when you go ahead and you mix up these products You want them add them in sequence and always do this the same way Potassium silicate goes in first Mix that in then you're going to add the part a and part C So it's the 512-26 with all the micronutrients and the magnesium sulfate You can mix them up separately or you can mix them up together pour them in and then the very final component you always add is the calcium nitrate there. Um, and then you mix that up and you go and you're good to go. Okay. That's how I do my five, uh, 50 gallon uh, fertilizer water tanks. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty cheap. And I get fantastic results. Now that we've measured out our fertilizer, we need to dissolve that into water. I use a nice warm water to dissolve those um, fertilizers into. And here we go. Here are all our four parts of our fertilizer that we use. Potassium silicate, part A, part B, and magnesium sulfate. Again, the first thing we're going to add is our potassium silicate. Now, so I'm using um, the Agsil 25, super concentrated, really clean. I, um, I put it in at 2.5 ounces per 50 gallons of water. That's it. Pretty cheap. Um, okay, now your potassium silicates that you're, you're going to get in the hydro stores um, could be like, I think it's like 25 mils of uh, potassium silicate, up to 50 mils maybe, um, mLs per um, 50 gallons of water. So just be aware of that. It's going to be a little bit different than what you see uh, that I do, and that's totally normal uh, in this case. Uh, so now this is EC, just bumped up slightly to point. 
9.2 and our pH, look at that, 9.0. So it went from 7.1 to 9.0 pH. That's a big swing. So just be just be cognizant of when you add your potassium silicate, you will get a pH um, either up or down pretty significantly, depending on what their, um, their, um, their product is. Most of them will bump up your pH um, to pretty pretty high level, a level, so like a nine almost, okay? So go ahead, we've added now their second component. This is the first part, the part A, which is the 51226 with micronutrients in it, and it will go in clear. It has a little bit of a brown tinge uh, color to it. That's totally normal, it's exactly what you wanna see. Okay, now the submersible pump has mixed up all that water, and look at that. The EC has jumped up quite a bit, the pH has come down quite a bit. So the pH right now is right around 6.6, 6.7, and our EC value is somewhere between 1.6 and 1.7 here um, when it's all mixed up, okay? So this is totally normal, and you should just you know, be aware of when, you adding, when you're adding fertilizer, what's going on um, to the pH and to the EC of the water. So that gives, gives you an idea um, of how things work, okay? Our third component is that part C, as we like to say, and that's the magnesium sulfate or Epsom salts. It should be um, dissolved nice and evenly and clear, goes in clear, and should always mix in clear. You shouldn't, shouldn't get any cloudiness um, when you mix anything. Um, cloudiness just basically means um, you're having some interaction there with other elements because you didn't mix um, the correct way. And um, that's not that's not, not always a good thing. Not terrible, but it'll happen every now and then. But the biggest thing is now we've mixed in our magnesium sulfate at 1.2 grams per gallon of water. And you can see it didn't do much. S pH is 6.7 and the EC jumped up to 1.8, okay? All right, now the last and final component of our mix is going to be our nitrogen source with all the calcium, and that's calcium nitrate, and it mixes up nice and clean and clear. We're going to go ahead and mix that in. So this mixing rate, as you remember, is 2.4 grams per gallon of water. Mixes in nice and clear. Should go in clear. Shouldn't have any cloudiness going on, and that's what we like to see. All right, our submersible pump is now mixing up that water nicely, a nice little vortex. You can't really see it, but there's a nice little vortex going on in that water. Mixing up all our fertilizer components. All right, once that's mixed in, now we're gonna go look to see what our Blue Lab Guardian says. And look at that, 2.4 EC. Now it is right around exactly where I wanna be, somewhere between 2.3 and 2.6 EC, and a pH of 6.6. .6. Now my pH, final pH, should always be somewhere between 5.5 and 5.8. That's kind of where my sweet spot I like to be at all times. Um, so all I have to do now is to add some pH down, a little acid. Um, so you're gonna mix that in slowly into the tank and it will slowly bring down the pH to what I want to be between 5.5 and 5.8. Okay, our final fertilizer water is 2.5 EC, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pH of 5.5. That is my sweet spot uh, for fertilizing cannabis through flour, and that's what I have my uh, system to run for in Rockwell. Okay, now, how do I fertilize the plants? Well, they come on um, basically pretty simply through this timer system. Um, I set these things to come on at 9.15 in the morning for one minute, and thereafter, every hour, or on the hour for one minute, all the way up till 8 p.m. So if it comes on at 9 a.m. and the lights are off at 9 p.m., um, the final fertilizer uh, goes on for one minute at 8 p.m. and then it's off for that. So now we've fr mixed up all our water. Here it is, nice and clear with a little brownish tinge, ready to go to fertilize our plants. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, 
comment down below and we'll see you guys on the next video.